Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 38-39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I'd like to welcome each one of you here this morning, and uh, we'll open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can gather together in, in your house, and we just pray that you would be with this whole service, that it be pleasing to you, and pray that you would just guide each one of us in as we leave this place this morning, that we would be more filled with you and more in step in our walk with you. And we just pray that you would be with each one who assembles here this morning, that they be blessed by their time. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us and pray that you would just continue to lead and direct. In Jesus' name, amen like to you can stand with us this morning <laughs>
328, we're going to sing, um, Are You Washed in the Blood? visited Sunday evening. A youth group and volunteers were called on to pray. A little girl volunteered to pray for the pastor. In her prayer, she prayed, be with our pastor and help him to preach a better sermon next Sunday. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> if you would turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, we're going to, we're in chapter 3 now, and if you would stand with us as we read God's word together, uh, we're beginning verse 10 and we're reading to verse 17. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what per persecutions I endured. And out of them, all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you've learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you've learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, 
that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these words, and we pray as we talk about them together, Lord, you'd be with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So Paul talks about, he's really talking about his own life and how in purpose and faith and long-suffering and love and perseverance and persecution and afflictions, he has continued to serve the Lord. And remember what he's doing here, he's, he's, he's giving his last words to Timothy and he's encouraging Timothy. And, and, and here we read in verse 15, it says, from childhood, you've known the Holy Scriptures. What is he speaking about? He's speaking about the, the Scriptures, the Old Testament Scriptures that Timothy was taught as a, as a little boy. And these Scriptures are able to make you wise. And then it says, for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, salvation through Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus is is it is prophesied in the Old Testament but think where it is really taught more thoroughly it is taught in the New Testament and then Paul says these words all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction for righteousness you know, I had a wonderful week studying this week, and it's one of those weeks where you're just thankful to the Lord to study and study and see what he is doing through wonderful men of God. I listened to a man, his name is Dr. Gary Kruger. I encourage you to listen to, to watch some of his videos. Dr. Gary Kruger is his name. He is an apologist. He, his expertise is on the canon of Scripture. The, the canon means particular, particular, and it's, it's, there were particular books that were chosen. And it is amazing in our day, the attack on Scripture. How many have heard or watched the movie Da Vinci Code? Or read the book? Okay? Do you know, in that book, and, and you know, this is what, how the enemy works. The enemy goes after people with lies. A little bit of truth in it, mostly lies. And Brown wrote this book, and you know what? Uh, Dr. Gary Kruger was talking about, he would get these calls. What's your rebuttal to Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code? And he said, rebuttal? This guy wrote a fictitious book full of lies. There's no need, of, need for rebuttal, but you know, it's incredible how many people around the world read this book. And, and part of the problem is, and I just asked someone re recently who's been in church for a while, do you know what canon means? No idea. What is the canon of scripture? See, when we read these words, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. See, the, the attack the enemy uses, okay, what is scripture? And so, what, 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 and, there, and then there was a book that was written not that long ago that became a New York bestseller, and also attacking this, and, and basically what it said is, is there were different, different books, the different, and, 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 and he calls it not Christianity, Christianities. Different books, and what happened is, Constantine brought the hammer down and said, okay, this is, these are the books that are going to be in the canon. And so, and if you don't know what's going on, if you don't, there, there are very, very, very good arguments against this. And we're going to talk a little bit about them this morning. Okay, so for example, here's a question I don't know if you've thought before. When John wrote the book of John, the Gospel of John, or Matthew wrote the book of Matthew, another gospel. Did Matthew know, or did John know, he was writing scripture? What do you think? Did he actually know? Did Matthew know? Did Paul know he was writing scripture? 
These are important questions, and I'll tell you why they're important. Because the canon of Scripture, see, one of the biggest arguments that I appreciated Dr. Gary Kruger used was this. He said, listen, God gave his word to people, his Scripture to people. The authority of Scripture came from God Almighty. It wasn't decided by the church. Oh, we're going to pick these books. You know what? These books are kind of nice. I kind of like these books. We read these books. Have you read this book? Oh, well, let's put this one in Scripture. No, 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 no. That's not the way it happened. In fact, in the first century, 22 of 29 New Testament books were already circulating, were already being treated as Scripture. All 13 of Paul's letters... The four Gospels, the book of Acts, the book of Revelation, 1 Peter, 1 John, 2 and 3 John, 2 Peter, Jude were added later. But the bulk of it was already considered scripture. Why? By the authority of the Lord given through these men. And these men knew what they were writing was scripture. This is very, very, very important. So when we read these words, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Profitable for doctrine. And you know, I was watching as Alicia did this wonderful job talking to the kids. And she, thy word have I heard that have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know what we're assuming? That this is the very words of God. And it is. And we can be confident in it is. And when there's attacks on scripture. There, there, there's talk right now, oh, there's these lost books. Well, let me tell you about one of the lost books. See, there was a guy, his name is Muhammad Ali. Not the boxer. He was a shepherd who lived in Egypt. And he was digging one day, and he came across this container. And his brother was with him. He says, I'm going to break it open. He says, you better not break it open because it might be, it might be a, 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 a genie lamp. True story. It might be a genie lamp, and he, this genie might call a curse on you, on us. And they talked about it for a while, and they decided to break it open because the possibility that there's gold in there was worth more than any genie, so they broke it open. And all, all they were so disappointed. All there was was, these, was these, these books in there. And you know what they were? They were the Apocrypha. They were the Gnostic letters. So let me tell you about one Gnostic letter. The Gospel of Peter. Now, you think when you hear the word, word Gospel of Peter, Peter wrote it. Well, it's proven that the Gospel of Peter was not written until the second century. Peter was long gone. He was already with Jesus. Couldn't possibly have written the book. And, and you know what you'll find what, if you study these books, if you look at them, what they do is they try to fill in the... It's very obvious that they've read the four Gospels, and they try to fill in the gaps. So, so this is one thing, one thing that, that, that the Gospel of Peter, it does. Okay, like, let me ask you this question. Do you ever read in the Gospels the actual event of Jesus coming out of the tomb? Do we actually hear, read that, that how Jesus came out of the tomb? We don't. But you do read it in the Gospel of Peter. You know what you read? The 90 foot Jesus, well it doesn't say 90 feet, it, it says that he reached the sky, came out of the tomb and following him was the cross, the speaking cross. Now, last I heard, the, 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 the Roman soldiers, went, went after they crucified you, they didn't give you a, a parting gift, a cross, to go with you to, in the tomb. So I don't know where he came up with this. And how did the cross actually come out, and how did it speak? You see, it, it, there's these very strange stories. The One of them, the infancy Gospel of Thomas, tells these, this, this crazy story about Jesus, was having a disagreement with someone, killed him, and then brought him back to life. Oh, that, that sounds like Jesus. You see, you know, you, know, you know what it's called? There's a word for it. It's called heresy. Now, I'm not saying that you can't get some things from these apocryphal books. See, see uh, the, the, the Catholic folk, they, they actually have some of the apocrypha in their Bibles. But, but you know what? That wasn't, that wasn't part of the Bible in the early church. 
The early church had certain books that they had picked. And then by the fourth century, it was actually the canon came together. This was the official 27 books of the New Testament. So, so but, but what's, what's scary about all this is this, okay? The credibility of the Bible is being questioned. The credibility of the Bible is being questioned. Because when we read these words, now, now let's, let's talk about something else here. How did the apostles treat Scripture? What did they believe? You know, we were talking about this a little bit in the youth class. And uh, we asked this question. How did Jesus treat Scripture? Well, we read in Matthew 5, 17 to 18, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until everything takes place. Do you know what Jesus is saying here? See, they had, they had these little punctuation marks. And Jesus said that <clears throat> even to the very punctuation mark, this is scripture. Now, the, see, see the, the, uh, the skeptic, they will say this, okay? The problem with the Bible is you have all these errors. You know, and it's interesting. I was listening to listening to one of one of one of uh, Kerber's lectures, and he was he was talking with someone else, and they were talking about this very thing. And he says he says it's very interesting. Now, now, because because let me let me ask you this, okay? What would have been the best way to actually have the original, um, knowing for sure we have the original scripture? Well, if you could take a photocopier from 2020, bring it back in time, and copy them, you'd know for sure every, everything would be perfect. Okay. Now, you know, you know that, but that's not how God does things. He does things in His time with people in His time. But you know what he did, what God did? This is what he did. You know, and I remember here reading about or talking hearing about this when I was in Bible school. That that see they, they look at things and, and what we often do is we take our standards of the way we do things in our day and we we, we put that on the Bible and we or we put that on our our the way we do things and we okay, well, why why'd they do it that way? Well, for example, I heard about these these buildings that they would hold all these old manuscripts, and after a while they they just burn them. See, that's weird to us. We would want to keep the actual original. Right? But what they did is, now they had a process. Now, now even the even scriptures themselves, they, they, it was called a codex. And, and, and you know, they were cut, it was cutting edge in its day because everything was written on scrolls. Well, in the New Testament, they actually wrote it on what's called codexes. They wrote on both sides. And, and so what happens, though, is... Like when Lynn, Lynn and I were in Israel, we went to the Qumran caves and we got to see where the shepherd found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Incredible archaeological find, way more important than the one of this Ali guy found. And what, what they found there was they found the, the, the earliest manuscripts. The, for, for example, the, what they found in, 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 this, in Isaac, the Isaiah, it was like... And, and, and so what they, what they do, this is what they would do. They would compare the Isaiah that they have with this even earlier manuscript. And you know what they found? It's, 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 it's identical. Maybe, maybe a little thing here or there where a scribe would write in the margin. And, and then what they would do, and, and what textual critics would do is they would look at it and they'd go, okay. So, so for example... When we read in, 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 in the book of Mark, there's a, there's a por portion in there that says this wasn't in one of the earliest manuscripts. As Christians, we don't need to be alarmed by this. We don't need to be alarmed when it says the story of, of the woman caught in adultery wasn't in one of the earliest manuscripts. Don't be alarmed by this. 
Because here's, here's the thing, this is what we do. We take and compare, this, the, these Bible scholars, they compare the, the earliest manuscripts and they say, well, what is, because you know what we can do? Is we can, we, this is the most accurate scriptures we have. Now when we say the Bible is inspired, we're talking about the original writings. Now think about this though, what is actually inspired? Is it this, is it these, the, this writing that's on there? Or the very word of God that we memorize that, that is, is, is the authority and it's God's word given to us. So we got to realize that, see, this is so true. And look what Paul says here. See, see we talked about what Jesus said. This is what Paul says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable to for doctrine, for proof, and for correction, for instruction of righteousness. When Paul's writing these words, do you think he's writing scripture? He says it right there. He's writing scripture. What else does Paul say? We'll get back to a couple things there Jesus says here in a second. What else does Paul say? In second, in, pardon me, in 1 Corinthians 14, 36 to 38, it says, if you claim to be a prophet or think you are very spiritual, you should recognize that that which I am saying is a command from the Lord himself. Paul knew what he was writing. All 13 books were scripture. When he's writing these words to Timothy, he knows he's writing scripture. It says it right there. All scripture. is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteousness. Now, what else What else about Jesus can we say here? Okay, when Jesus is speaking about historical events, do you know, like some people will, will question, was there actually a Jonah and a whale? Did Jonah actually, and, and it doesn't actually say whale, it says big fish. Did he survive this, this, uh, this experience? Okay, well, when you read Matthew 12, Jesus says, as Jonah was in the whale for three days, so, so the Son of Man will be in the earth for three days, and then he will rise. Okay, question. Who would you rather believe? The liberal prof at some university, or Jesus? See, you don't want to believe what Jesus said, you can put your problems. I, I don't know, the son of God who says this, he, he, he taught Adam and Eve's experience was, was historical. Matthew 24 talks about Noah and the flood. See, and, and, and the fact that he talks about Matthew, or pardon me, about Adam and Eve that is historical. Do you, do you realize how important that is? Because this brings us into creation, the debate about creation. Was it actually a six-day creation? Well, Jesus believed it was. Study it. Jesus believed it was a six-day creation. And you, 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 so, so once again, who would you rather believe? See, there's so many holes in evolution, it's not even funny. We're not, we're not talking about that this morning, but, but understand. We can rely, we can trust, we can trust God's word. You know, the, the prophetic... The prophetic examples, Isaiah 53, Psalm 22. Like, it's incredible the detail described, and it's the only explanation is God who's outside of time is describing events in the future. The scriptures are all scriptures inspired by God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, and we know that your word is the word of God. Lord, we know that your word is being attacked in our day. That people will, will say, oh, wow, you know, this... This canon of scripture was decided on by certain people and it was political and all this. And Lord, it's just not true. We read in the very book, books of, of the New Testament 
that these writers knew. Lord, when we think of John and how Irenaeus and Polycarp, Polycarp, who was a student of his, treated his book of John, the Gospel of John, as scripture. And Lord, right from the very earliest church, Lord, your word was treated as your word. And help us, Lord, to treat your word as your word and to understand that it is, it is here for us to be correct, corrected, to follow you. Lord, it is profitable for doctrine. It's profitable to memorize. Lord, we thank you for our quizzing group. We thank you for Awana, Lord, and how kids learn the word of God. They learn the word of God in, in, in EQ, with, and, in, and they're going through it even right now, Lord, back there in the back room there with Angie. Learning the Word of God. Lord, we don't use the Reader's Digest. We use your Word. Because it is powerful. It is powerful, Lord, and it speaks to us how to live. Help us, Lord, to, to know that your Word is truth. To trust it, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our closing song. <laughs> I know who holds tomorrow, number 250. That's the start of the word. Let's start with the chorus. Anything's about to go. Thank you. 
Lord, of you coming and dying on the cross for our sins. And Lord, even that is, we think of the gospel of Matthew and the gospel of John, and it was actually in the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew, and the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. That's the way the early church spoke of it. And Lord, when we come to something like the gospel of Thomas, it doesn't even talk about the gospel. It is so much in error. And we thank you, Lord, that we do have your word. And Lord, that you gave the authority because you are God. And Lord, you made a way. You sent Jesus to come here to die on the cross for our sins. And you rose from the grave. And that is the gospel message, Lord. And maybe there's someone here, Father, that's never prayed and say, Lord Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you forgive me of my sins? I want my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord, and it's just a prayer away. Lord, we want to take this moment here to pray these simple words. Lord, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you forgive me of my sins? Would you write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord? We thank you, Lord, that we can pray these simple words, Lord. And Father, that you are a God who works. You... We love you because you first loved us. And Lord, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for the truths of your word. And we pray, Lord, you'd be with us as we leave this place. Lord, that we can be confident in the word of God, to read it every day, to read it to, the, to our kids, to spend time with you, Lord. Even this week, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May He give you grace and peace.